on day one, I was an ice fighter and I was playing with my brother Maxi, showing off my frost breath. <laughs> you have such cool ice powers, Bronzo. Out of nowhere, a nasty fire hornet appeared. Submit, little ice fighter. I must destroy you before it's too late. Ice is much too powerful, and it has been foretold that you are the only one who will be able to stop me, Scorch, from taking over the world. I'll never submit. Bring it on. Scorch used her fiery blast against me and Maxi. The flames dealt a ton of damage to my icy skin, but I didn't let that stop me from retaliating. I returned fire with icy frost breath, freezing Scorch in place for moments at a time. As we fought, I gained an ice wand weapon. I grabbed it and started using it against her. Blocks of ice began falling down upon this fiery beast. <sighs> You don't know what you're doing, little ice fighter. Someone's going to get hurt. I used my new power again, but Scorch quickly dodged out of the way, and my ice power hovered over Maxi. Bronzo! Maxi! The ice then fell on Maxi, crushing him. <laughs> you fool. I warned you. Now you better stay away, or others will face the same fate as Maxi. How about life? Bronzo. As she flew off, I threw my head up and made a vow. Scorch, on my brother's honor, I swear I will defeat you on the 100th day. You'd better start counting because I'm coming for you. On day two, I went to go see my mother, the Queen Spider, in the throne room. Bronzo, my beloved son, it's so wonderful to see you, but where is Maxi? Mother, I'm so sorry, he's gone. Oh no, my poor Maxi. Oh, my poor sweet child. We will have to hold a ceremony in his honor, but... How did he die? I was fighting the evil fire hornet, Scorch, and I accidentally crushed Maxi with my new ice power. I didn't mean to. Son, this might not be the end for Maxi. The magic you hold is special. It comes from the goblins who have the gift of resurrection. What? Go, oh, seek out the Goblin King and ask for his help to revive your brother. He should be in his castle, deep in the forest of goblins. Do this, and Maxi may live once again. My mother had bestowed on me a great quest, one of epic proportion. But first, I had to make sure I had the right tools for the job. Luckily for me, I knew some people that could get me started. Here, kid, take this map. Should get you all the way to the Goblin Forest. And take this iron pick, too. If you mind yourself some goodies, it should help you along your journey. Wow, thanks. You watch yourself now. This world ain't a safe one. Not with Scorch and her firebug crew around. With my trusty new pickaxe, I quickly ventured deeper into the caves and mined some iron and coal. Soon, I had enough resources to put together an entire iron tool set and some armor. This was exactly what I needed to set out to find the Goblin King. I'm coming to save you, Maxi. On day three, I left my cave home for the first time ever. Turns out, I was under the tundra the entire time. Wow, it feels great out here. Perfect weather for me. Just then, I saw a bunch of scorpions that wanted to kill me. If you want some, then come get some, curly tails. I used my ice powers to slow them down and damage them. The scorpions had the number advantage on me, but I wasn't gonna let that deter me. One by one, I took them down. I told you I wasn't playing around. I'm dangerous. I had managed to kill all but one of the scorpions. Scorch will hear of this. You will rue this day. I tried to follow it, but they were too fast for me to catch up. Yeah, you better run, scaredy scorpion. I was beginning to get hungry and had forgotten to snack up on food. What am I supposed to eat? There is no food here. Suddenly, I spotted a white fox who was munching on some berries while stalking me. Hey, you, where did you get those berries? They darted off into the snowy distance as soon as they saw me. Hey, get back here. I'm super hungry. I followed them until we arrived into some woods. They were pretty fast, but I managed to keep up with them. I was determined to get some food. Luckily, the fox ended up leading me right to an area with lots of berry bushes. I stopped following and started grabbing the berries. I'll take these and this and that. I'll take all of it. I collected as many as I could without getting pricked by their thorns. Oh, she's taking everything. I ate all the berries to my heart's content. Little did I realize that I was eating all of the fox his food. Oh man, this is so good. I'm stuffed now. I wandered and found a nice spot to rest. I decided I should make myself some shelter. It wasn't safe out in the open with all these fire bugs crawling around. I cut down a few trees to make room and started making the base from stone bricks as well. I used the wood I chopped for the walls and some more stone brick for a cozy central fireplace. Not that that helped me much since I was frozen. 
but I liked the aesthetic. Sweet dreams to myself, I guess. While I was dreaming, I dreamt of an awesome game filled with exciting characters, cool graphics, and amazing gameplay. Honkai Star Rail. Honkai Star Rail is a brand new free-to-play cross-platform RPG. It's great because you can carry your data wherever you go, no matter what platform you're playing on. It's also super immersive. You'll get to meet new people, explore new worlds, and best of all, overcome powerful enemies. There's dozens of characters to choose from, each with their own unique styles. So choose the one that best suits you. The gameplay is also intuitive and easy to understand, so you can pick up and play. But that doesn't mean skill isn't involved. You'll need to hone your skills in battle if you plan to win. These battles are awesome, with orbital cannons, ice walls, and full-fledged armies. The unique combat abilities of the characters makes it super fun to play as them. There's tons to do in Honkai Star Rail, from finding treasure, solving puzzles, to even just listening to the inhabitants of the universe. Adventure is around every corner, so don't wait. Download Honkai Star Rail now using the link in the description and get 50 Stellar Jades by using the code on screen. Adventure awaits. Thanks Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring the video. On day four, I woke up with the fox from earlier resting next to me. Hey, that's kind of cute. With the sound of my voice, I startled the fox and they ran away. Wait, come back. Well, I guess I do have a mission on my hands. I mean, legs. I began following the map to find the goblin forest and eventually ventured into an ice spike area. This place looks interesting. I hope I'm close by now. What I wasn't expecting was Scorch and her army melting down the ice spikes. Ice. What the heck is she doing? I'm gonna give her a piece of my mind. It's not safe if you keep going. The fox was right behind me and stopped me from going any further. Hmm, fine. Thanks for stopping me before I do something I regret. I'm Prince Bronzo, by the way. I've been watching you for a little while. I didn't realize you were a prince with all the berries you kept stealing. Nice to meet you, your highness. No need to call me that. You got it. My name is Trix. How exactly did you become an ice spider? It's a long story, and I don't really have time. I have to get to the goblin forest. Well, hey, that sounds like fun. I can go with you. Okay, but let's be sneaky and not get caught. Together, Trix and I snuck around the Scorpion campsite and headed towards the goblin forest. During days five to six, we followed the map I got from the spider, and soon enough, Trix and I arrived at the goblin forest. As we walked through, we spotted some goblins goblins watching us from behind some trees. I wondered if Trix was frightened, but when I turned around, they were gone. Trix, where'd you go? Well, I guess I'm on my own now. Eventually, I found the Goblin King's castle. It wasn't what I expected, but I respected that. Hello, I'm seeking an audience with the Goblin King. He's busy. Please leave at once. But I'm the Spider Prince. And if you don't bring me the Goblin King, then I will be forced to use my ice powers against you. The Goblin Guard began laughing profusely. Your ice powers don't work on goblins. We have magic protection against you. It was our magic that was given to you in the first place. Ugh, whatever. When will the Goblin King be available? From the looks of it, he should be free in about 44 days. What? That's like in the middle of the video. You can't have the Bronzo army waiting that long. Bronzo army? Is that a threat of war? No, 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 no. I don't want any trouble. I walked away in disappointment, but had the clever idea of going around to the back of the castle. As a spider, I could crawl up to the top unnoticed. I'm coming for you, Goblin King. On days seven and eight, I snuck up the wall of the castle, using my spider legs to climb right to the top. When I got there, I found the Goblin King, who was just chowing down on some soup. How could he ignore me this whole time just to eat some stew? I decided to jump out and confront him. Goblin King, I've come to speak to you. The guard immediately roared at me, ready to attack. Wait, Ogre, don't you recognize this spider? He is Prince Bronzo, son of the Spider Queen. Fine. Finally, some recognition around here. Although I sat here eating soup, I know why you have sought me out. I felt the death of Maxi, your brother, and I knew at once the Spider Queen would ask for my help in his revival. If you knew this already, why didn't you come out sooner? It was good soup. Okay, fine. Are you going to help me though? In order for me to help you, you must help me first. I'll do anything to save Maxi. As a brother should. Very well. While my men gather the ingredients for the resurrection spell, I need you to, um, build some new houses for the people of my kingdom. 
What? I can try, but why would I be any good at that? In many of your past lives, you were a great builder of epic proportions. In others, you were really just so-so. Therefore, the skill must have evened out in this life. That sounds right. I'll give it my best shot then. Let's see what these spider legs can do. I was determined I would need tools if I wanted to build the homes. So from days 9 through 10, that's what I did. I began with mining for diamonds and lots of them. I scoured through the caves and I found pockets of diamonds all over the place. With these, I can make all my tools. I have a diamond sword, pickaxe, and an axe. Then I began building homes for all of the goblins. I used all sorts of different materials to build their homes. Some homes were large, some were small, and some were huge. I made sure it was medieval themed so they could feel right at home. And I made all sorts of cool details, including a fountain with a fancy light post. In the end, all the houses looked very distinct and something I would be proud to live in. Maybe later, I'll upgrade my base. Let me know what you think I should add. The Goblin King spoke and said this will help strengthen the alliance between our two kingdoms and his relationship with the queen, whatever that meant. Thank you so much for the hose. Take his gift and a token of appreciation. It's a fire shield. It should help you against the fire scorpion scorch. Thank you, kind ogre. I built a lookout tower at the edge of the town so they could keep watch of who was entering their forest. I can see for miles and miles up here. Nothing will get past. Finally, I met up with the king to talk business. The ingredients have arrived. We must wait for them to be prepared correctly. I will summon you tomorrow. Awesome. I'm excited to get my brother back. On days 11 through 13, all of my efforts were finally paying off. The Goblin King led me deeper into the forest to an ancient ritual stone. Here we are. This is where we will resurrect your brother. Watch as I place the spell components before this stone and conduct the sacred ritual of life. The Goblin King threw everything down on the ground and started reciting a poem. Goblins, goblins, we're the best. Raise this spider from his rest. Eye of spider and string of wool. Do your job and raise this fool. Wait, where did you get that spider eye? Suddenly, a big glowing circle appeared and Maxie popped out of it. Maxie, brother, I'm so excited to see you. Ah, oh, my head. What happened? Where are we? The last thing I remember is some big fire bug attacking us. It's a long story. You see- Stop right there, Prince Bronzo. This is no time for that. Your brother needs rest. Guard, take this spider to get some well-deserved sleep. Yeah, I think I'll get some rest. See you later, Bronzo. A goblin guard led my brother away back to the castle. Maxie must never know what happened to him. If he finds out, he will go mad and might very well die again. Oh no, that's terrible. How am I supposed to keep this secret from him? That is for you to find out. And one more thing, Maxie must also never know of your powers. This could trigger the madness that lies within him. This was very sad to hear, but I decided having Maxie back was worth it, even if it meant never using my powers again. During days 14 to 17, Maxie and I left the Goblin Kingdom together. I'm so happy you're with me, Maxie. What are you talking about, bro? I've always been with you. Just then, Trix met back up with us. Sorry for leaving you back there, your highness. I was scared, but I'm glad Maxie is back. Back? What are you talking about? And who is this? That's crazy. You didn't go anywhere. This is my new friend Trix, by the way. I took Trix aside for a moment to explain everything. She couldn't tell Maxie about what had happened, or else we would lose him forever. I get it now. I'll try to keep my mouth shut from now on about it. Thanks, Trix. Together, the three of us began our journey back to the tundra. When we arrived, trouble was waiting for us. It was Scorch with some of her army. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't let Maxie see this. Uh, ahem, Trix. Take Maxie home, would ya? What? Why? I don't want to go. I want to fight. It's for your own good. Stop arguing with me and leave. Fine. I will. Let's go, Trix. I felt bad, but it was for Maxie's own good. Now all that was left was Scorch and her army and myself. Hmm, I don't remember your brother being alive last I saw him. He won't last long after I kill him again. I got super frustrated and launched my ice powers against some of her foot soldiers, killing them in an instant. How dare you do that to my army? 
Take this! Scorch blasted me with a huge amount of fire, but luckily I had my shield to block her attack. That won't be enough to stop me, your funny ice fighter. Army, kill the ice fighter! Scorch fled the scene as a wave of her army rushed on me. You guys are nothing compared to me. I'm a prince. I unleashed all of my ice power onto them and froze them in their tracks. They didn't stand a chance, but it was too late. Scorch was long gone by now. Curse you, Scorch! Quickly, I realized that if I wanted Maxi to live, I would need to go into exile. So on days 18 to 21, I headed to the cabin I had made earlier and decided to live there. Wow, I'm glad this is still here. If I was going to be living in exile though, I was going to need to live somewhere much cooler. Time to get this party started. The first thing I did was completely tear down the cabin. Better to start fresh, right? Tearing things down was pretty satisfying. Next, I began throwing ice everywhere. I used a few different ice blocks like blue ice and packed ice as well as some blue concrete for eyes and gray for my powerful fangs. I wanted to make sure I'd have a much cooler base this time. After a while, I had created a giant room and the start of an awesome ice spider statue. No home is complete without a garden and a giant spider web, right? I threw some wheat, carrots, and potatoes into the mix and created a functional farm. Then I made a trap next to it out of cobweb. I figured this might also catch me some food. Being an ice spider is so handy. Ah, uh, I mean, leggy. Somehow, my plan worked, and a lonely pig wandered right into my trap. As the pig looked deep into my eyes, it reminded me of a book I once read. Something about a spider on a farm. Whatever, my stomach grumbled, reminding me that I was really hungry. With the expert instincts of a hunter, I slayed the pig and munched on the pork chops it dropped. Nom 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 nom. Ooh, so tasty. As I sat there chewing, rain began to fall gently around me. It seemed kind of poetic like the Goblin King's chant. I slowly crawled back to my room, feelings of loneliness making me miss my family even more than I already did. Oh, Maxie, I miss you. I got a visit from Trix during days 22 to 25. She told me Maxie was safe. I also let the queen know that Maxie couldn't find out what happened to him or he'd go insane. Thanks for your help, Trix. You're very brave. I thought it was time, so I pulled out my sword and knighted Trix. You are now part of the Ice Spider Kingdom. Yay! This is amazing! I can't wait to tell Maxie! Hey, wait a second. You should come back to the kingdom with me. No, no. I exiled myself to keep Maxie safe. Oh, come on. Don't be so hard on yourself. Let's go. Come on. Trix, that's enough. Please respect my decision. Uh... Okay, your highness. Since I'm your knight now, I will stay by your side and protect you. Thanks for that, Trix. I decided to make a room for Trix. She would stay in the body of the statue since I'm in charge and took the head. I added berries and decorations to make her room really fit her style. So what do you think? I love it! I can't wait to help you make the legs later! I'll be looking forward to that as well. It's gonna be epic. I checked on the cobweb trap during days 26 to 29, and to my surprise, it actually caught something. It's a baby polar bear. Hmm, they don't really drop meat, so I might as well free it. I should still be careful though. Thank you for helping me. Sure, but why are you so far from home? Well, I got lost, then I wandered into your trap. Sorry about that. I can make it up to you by helping you find your home. What do you say? Just then, Trix barged in with some vital information. I know where it is, but sadly I'm not allowed there anymore. Ah, I know you. You're the great white ghost, the best thief in the land. Thief? What? Is that true? It's not important. I put it all behind me. I don't live that life anymore. Okay, Trix. I believe you. So where is it? Just keep going east and then take a hard right at the tallest pine tree in the land. Thanks once again, Trix. I couldn't do it without you. I grabbed some supplies and headed out with Pip, following close behind. Everything was going well on days 30 to 33, until Pip and I ran into some real trouble. Arr, we're being attacked! Help us! Oh no, Pip! They're being attacked by fire beetles! Let's give them a hand! Pip and I leapt into battle, taking out the fire beetles one by one. I used my ice crystal in combination with my sword to freeze the bugs, then chop them down to pieces. 
Pip was stronger than I thought. He had a really big bite for such a small little bear. Whoa, this is a heated fight. Finally, we won, saving the goblins. Oh, you saved our heights. We was on our way to the royal wedding when those fire beetles jumped out at us. How nasty of them. You got that right. Who's the royal wedding for? Hey, I mean, if you weren't invited, then it's none of your business, is it? See you later, alligators. The goblins then ran off, leaving us in the dust. Hey, you're welcome. Jeez, that was rude. Yeah, we're not even alligators. As Pip and I talked, I realized I needed stronger armor, and Pip didn't even have any. If we were serious about staying safe from danger, we needed better armor. Let's go mine for diamonds, Pip. We need to seriously suit up. Oh, I've never been mining before. We searched and searched, and soon enough, Pip and I were rolling in diamonds. I quickly crafted us full diamond armor sets, one for me and one for Pip. Here you go, Pip. You can be safe now, too. Wow, it's so shiny. Thanks, Bronzo. No problem. Now let's get you home. Pip and I arrived at the huge pine cone tree from days 34 to 37. We knew Polar City was nearby. Book a hard right here, Pip, just like Trix mentioned. We trotted for a few more miles, and then we finally reached Polar City. There it is. I'm so happy to be back. Welcome home, Prince Pip. We've been worried. Wait, you're a prince too? Yep. I want you to meet my parents. Let's do it. I followed Pip through the Polar City and all the way to the king and queen's throne room. Ah, so you must be my son's great savior I've been hearing about. Thank you so much for rescuing my little Pip. Who knows where he'd be without you? I thought to myself how I trapped him in the first place. Yes, you're most welcome. As a reward, I would like to give you a free training lesson with our appointed teacher, Bert, the Isologer. Yes, he can teach you more ice tricks. Just then, Bert rushed in awkwardly. Sorry for interrupting. I'm just so excited to teach you more about your powers. Oh, I like an enthusiastic teacher. It is decided then. The Isologer woke me up bright and early on days 38 through 41 and immediately brought me somewhere to begin the training. <laughs> okay. What's first on the agenda, Bert? The first thing we'll be working on is improving your armory. Bert walked over to a type of blacksmithing area and got to work. I watched him use different types of ice related items and sticks to craft an awesome ice sword. All right, it's your turn now. Take these and go ahead. He handed me the same materials, and I did as instructed. With Bert's help, I learned how to create my own ice weapons and tools. Excellent! You keep that up and you may even be smithing at Skyforge one day! <laughs> no idea what you're referring to, but cool! He then led me over to where an ice bowl was waiting for me. Now, for the most difficult part of your training, you'll be sparring with this nice fellow. And go! What? Wait, I'm not ready! Ah! Bert hit me towards the bowl, and we immediately started to spar. I used my ice to attack, but the bull was incredibly strong. He fought back with a heavy punch, knocking me backwards. Come on, pal! You can do it! I know! I'm trying! I jumped back in and kept pushing. Unfortunately, I was still having difficulty getting the upper hand. I was starting to grow frustrated, even with the bull's kind words. Hey, you've got this! Believe it! Amidst my struggle, I started to feel something spark inside me, and I grew into a larger ice spider. I was stronger now, and gained ten more health. Hearts. That's the stuff. Time for a real challenge now. Come at me. I did as he asked and kept going. My new size and strength were making the fight much easier. I'm doing it. I'm... Ow! The bull suddenly showed off a ground pound ability he hadn't used yet. Whoa! I want to learn that. Focus! Then maybe you will learn something new. I began focusing on the fight, and just then, I learned how to summon ice bombs. I'm so... 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 Cold. The cold never bothered me. <laughs> Thanks for the sparring session. I was happy with my training. I felt like I came out much stronger than I was when I first had arrived. I returned to the Polar King and Queen to thank them for all they had given me. Please, it's the least we could do for you. We better hurry and get going, dear. We wouldn't want to miss the royal wedding. 
Yes. However, it is quite strange that the Spider Queen and the Goblin King are getting married. Wait, mom's getting married? I traveled back to my base on days 42 to 45. When I got there, I got a big surprise. Maxie, what are you doing here? Razo, you're finally here. Maxie, seriously, you've got to leave. No, I won't. Not until I get Bronzo to help me stop the wedding. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea, Maxie. You don't understand. The Goblin King is trying to take over the kingdom, and Mom can't see it. Bronzo, me and the Spider Kingdom need you more than ever. I don't know. That really is Mom's decision. Also, that sounds political, which can't be good for PR. Forget the politics. This is going to ruin the Spider Kingdom. I left home for a reason. I don't want anything to do with this. Please come back. It hasn't been the same without you. It's awful. And I can't shake the feeling that everyone's keeping something important from me. Now you're just being paranoid. No matter what I said, Maxie would not take no for an answer. I knew it was useless to keep arguing. So finally, I gave in. I really missed home anyway. Fine, I'll come back. But I don't want anything to do with your plan to ruin the wedding. Got it? I'm only going to attend. Yay! Thank you, Bronzo. This is great. Mom's gonna be so happy when she sees you. Ah, shucks. Okay, let's rest up. We can head back home in the morning. As soon as morning hit, we got straight to work. On days 46 to 49, we started by gathering all the supplies we would need for the road. Once that was done, we gathered to say our goodbyes. Bye, tricks. Bye, tricks. Bye, you two. Stay safe. Let's get going, Maxie. We're burning daylight. With that, Maxie and I went through the trees and navigated through the tundra. I was so happy that I finally got to see my brother again and spend time with him. I really missed Maxie. Soon enough, we got back to the Spider Kingdom. Everything looked like it was in great shape and the spiders and goblins were getting along well. It was definitely a lot more crowded than I remembered though. Excuse me, pardon me. Spider's coming through. This is a bit of a squeeze. Finally, we made it to the throne room. Mom, I'm back, and I brought Bronzo with me. My, what a surprise. Bronzo, it's so wonderful to see you. It seems these past days have been full of wonderful news. Yes, indeed. We're so excited to be getting married. This will be a grand event. <laughs> Good to see you too, Mom. Hi, Goblin King. Uh, come on, Maxie. Let's let them get ready. I dragged Maxie off before he could get too upset. It was going to take a while for the wedding to be fully prepared, so I tried to relax. I was back at home. Everything was supposed to be great, but for some reason, I just couldn't relax, though. So I decided to wander around. After walking through the streets of the city, I stumbled upon what seemed to be the Goblin King's quarters. He was inside and talking pretty loudly to an ogre. And then, once the wedding is over and I married to the spider queen i'm gonna start a war can you believe how easy this has been it's like taking candy from a baby polar bear <laughs> uh, you got it boss <laughs> oh no that's not good i scurried off making a spider line for maxi maxi you were right i just overheard the goblin king talking about how he wants to start a war <laughs> i was right i mean <clears throat> oh no i was right Bronzo. We have to stop the wedding. No kidding. I have an idea. Tomorrow, when the priest asks if there's any objections, let's speak up. We'll have the biggest objection they've ever heard. On days 50 to 53, it was finally time for the wedding. There were spiders and goblins everywhere in the chapel. It was completely crowded. Being the prince, it was my duty to walk the queen down the aisle. Bonzo, it is so wonderful to have you here. This is the best gift a mother could have ever asked for. I'm happy to do this for you, mom. I was not happy to do this. In fact, I felt very guilty about what I had to do. I walked my mom down the aisle to where the priest was standing, then went to go sit next to Maxie. We've got this, bro. Any second now. And so we are gathered here today to join these two hands, uh, leg and hand in marriage. Together, may their reign be long and prosperous. But first, are there any objections? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Maxie and I were ready to object, but that's when Scorch burst in. <laughs> Objection. Now that I'm here, this wedding is officially canceled. 
hordes of firebugs poured into the temple and started biting at everyone they could get their pincers on. Luckily, the spiders and the goblins weren't about to lay down and take it. They started fighting back at once. Talk about wedding crashers. This is ridiculous. I got ready to use my ice powers, but then I remembered. Maxi was right here with me. There's no way I could do that with him around. He could die again. I swung and slashed as best as I could, but I wasn't trained to use a sword very much. I always used my ice powers to fight. Take this and that. Suddenly, there was a familiar scream. Please be a one speed. <laughs> You're coming with me. Fire queen. We tried to get to the front, but there were way too many firebugs in the way. There was no way to stop it as Scorch whisked our mom away. With a burst of adrenaline, Max and I sliced through the remaining firebugs, along with the help of the rest of the spiders and goblins inside. Unfortunately, it was too late to save mom. What do we do now, Bronzo? Mom is gone. On days 54 to 57, we walked up to the Goblin King to confront him. I felt a little bad because he looked really sad, but I couldn't forget what I had overheard. Freeze, Goblin King. The jig is up. Huh? We know about the war you were planning on starting. Oh, good. But it's too late for that, I suppose, since the firebug started it before I could. Wait, what? You wanted to start a war against Scorch? But I thought... Of course I wanted to start a war against her. Who else in the world would it be against? I guess you've really always been on our side then. I'm sorry we thought you weren't for a little while. Yeah, sorry for doubting you. It's all right. Believe it or not, I get that kind of thing all the time. But forget about me for the moment. We must focus on saving the Spider Queen. You're right. We need to come up with a plan. First things first, I need to get stronger. Stronger than ever before. I have a solution. If you wish to become more powerful, you must reach the isolated polar city within which resides the all-powerful Iceologer, master of all things ice. Ask him to teach you. Already done. That's convenient. Now, you must return to him. With his help, you must find the ice core. But only you can use its power, since you are the, uh... Since you're the what? Oh, um, Maxie forgot you were there. All I was going to say was, since you are the firstborn prince. Ha 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 ha. Oh, that makes sense, I guess. I've got to go. No time to waste. Stay here, Maxie. Keep an eye on the kingdom. With a new goal in sight, I set out as quickly as possible. After getting back to the surface, I ran into tricks. Good to see you. Whoa, what's a rush? No time to explain. Follow me. As we ran toward the polar city on days 58 to 61, Trix kept asking questions about where we were going, all about the wedding, the battle, and Scorch kidnapping my mom. Oh man, that sounds really serious. It sure is. We have to go fast. Oh, my legs are so tired. We traveled miles and miles, going as fast as our legs could take us. After what felt like endless running, the polar city was in our sight. But as we approached, it was clear something was very wrong. The city was under attack by a horde of firebugs. Scary! We've got to help! No, too scary! I drew my sword and jumped into the fray. The firebugs were everywhere. There were too many to get rid of this nasty infestation. I ran around doing my best to help when I stumbled into Bert, the Isologer. He looked badly injured, though. It didn't seem like he had long to live. Bronzo, you returned! Bert, don't move. Keep your energy. Listen to me, Bronzo. Go to the ice forest. Deep within it lies the ice core. But beware! It is in the hands of the ice giants. <laughs> they are not the warmest hosts. <laughs> you will have to steal it. <laughs> Consider it done. You've done well, my boy. You will go far in this life. Bert took one more breath before succumbing no. to his injuries. No! I had so many more questions. The city was overrun by firebugs, though. It wouldn't be long before Scorch would get here. I had to go. With Bert only a memory in my mind, and with a new promise in my heart, I fled the polar city. As I ran toward the ice forest on days 62 to 65, it seemed like I had been stalked again by Trix. She was hot on my trail and caught up to me quickly. Ronzo, wait up! What are you doing here, Trix? I thought you ran off. Not cool of you, by the way. Hey, I'm really sorry. It's okay, Trix. To make up for it, I'll work on being more brave, like you, Bronzo. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So you know where to go, right? You know it. So if you want to go to the ice forest, that means dealing with the ice 
giants. And trust me, when I say we want to sneak our way through, I mean it. What happens if they notice us? Then we run, Bronzo. We run for the hills and we don't look back. Well, that doesn't sound like a good plan. Don't you worry. You're in good paws. Believe it or not, I used to be the best thief in the lands around here. Okay, Trix. I trust you on this one. We ran until we reached the edge of the Ice Giant's homeland. From there, I mimicked all of Trix's movements. And boy, she was good at this. As we got deeper into the forest, an Ice Giant passed right by us. Each step he took made the ground tremble. Ugh, wow, that was close. And now what? Now follow me. We were carefully sneaking past the giants on days 66 through 70. There were a few close calls, but luckily we went undetected. The giants only had one eye, so they couldn't see very well. However, they had great hearing as a result. So we had to be as quiet as possible to avoid getting caught. Just a little bit farther. Suddenly, a strange looking snowflake appeared and then started talking. Uh, hi, I haven't seen new people here for so long. What the? Shh, shh, you're gonna blow our cover. Yeah, no, scram. Scram, how rude. You know, I was so excited about meeting new people. I mean, still, honestly, I am. But to be so mean. Shh, he shushed me. You good sir are a menace. Can we still be friends though? You look really cool. The ice giants started to notice the commotion and were looking right at us. Look what you've done. We have to run or fight. I won't run. I'll fight by your side like the night you made me. Before we could talk more, the ice giants started moving into attack. Trix remained by my side and we used what we could to fight back. No! Why all the violence? It's stressing me out, man. The ice giants were focused on us, so I did what I could and tried to freeze them. However, they could launch us into the sky. I never thought I'd have to land in trees to avoid fall damage. We were fighting our best, but we just couldn't wear them down. They were giant rocks of ice. I can't win, they're too strong. There's no chance now, we need to run. Trix and I darted out and away from the ice giants, doing what we could to avoid getting hit. The snowflake popped out of hiding and followed us. You guys were gonna leave me? Some friends you are. We're still friends, right? We all made our escape during days 71 through 74. Snowflake, why did you do that? You almost got us killed. And now we'll never get to the ice core. Ice core? Hmm, that sounds... Familiar. Familiar how? Familiar as in, I know it's not with the snow giants. Well, I can't remember where it is now. What do you mean you can't remember? Try harder. Okay, let me see. Oh, I know. It was taken by the cow clan. Cows? Wait, no, that's not it. It was taken by the Endermen. Hmm. Wait, no. Mm. Okay, that's enough. We have to find it, but I'm tired. Let's go home. Hey, can I go with you? I thought about it for a moment. After all, the snowflake was the reason we almost died back there, but I couldn't let him be all alone. Fine, but you won't have a proper room to sleep in. Well, that's all right with me. Then let's go. We arrived back at the base and I settled in. I tried resting for a while, but I couldn't go to sleep. I suppose I can work on the statue while I'm awake. I finished making the legs and the back while everyone else was tucked away and resting. I made sure to use the same materials as the head and body so that the statue stayed cohesive. I was so excited when I finished, but I made sure not to wake anyone up. This is amazing! After all that building, I was so exhausted, I knocked out within minutes of laying on my bed. I slept pretty restless during that day, and on days 75 to 79, I woke up to polar bears outside my base. Prince Bronzo, when we saw this structure, we simply knew you had to be living here. It's so wonderful to see that you're doing well. Us, on the other hand, well, the polar city was destroyed by firebugs. My house is gone. I'm so sorry, guys. How about you stay here? I can make space for all of you. If you insist, then we'll gladly accept. Using my awesome building abilities, I gathered the materials I had left over from making my ice sculpture and started making homes for the polar bears. I knew nothing I made would feel the same as their home, but I did my very best to mimic what I remembered of Polar City. Soon enough, I had a pretty good collection of homes for the polar bears. Pip even started running around checking them out. Wow, I love it! Yes, this is simply exquisite. Oh my, what are you doing here? And what is wrong with you? What do you mean by that, Polar King? This is the missing ice core, but 
he doesn't look quite right. Oh, shiver me timbers. You made me remember. I am the ice core. I probably look weird because I had a, a small little piece of me stolen by that fire hornet. She was big and fiery. And a hornet, yes. Scorch! Yes. Oh, oh no, oh, that's not I, good. She if she has it, then she probably destroyed it. No, no, world. that would be impossible. The ice core is simply too powerful. It is most definitely still intact. That fire hornet, Scorch, is very likely just keeping it somewhere safe. If that's the case, then there's only one thing we can do about it. We've got to get it back. Lucky for you, I know just how to pull that off. Another stealth mission. Trix, the snowflake, and myself made our way to the Firelands during days 80 to 84. Along the way, we ran into some firebug soldiers. That's him. Get him. We had no option but to fight the fiery foes. I used my ice crystal to blow a frozen sheet of wind over the critters and my ice bombs for a larger scaled attack. Trix maneuvered quickly around the bugs and attacked when she had the chance. How do you like the cold? Eventually, Trix and I defeated the firebug soldiers and left no witnesses. We traveled some more and made it to the fire temple. As I approached, I saw Scorch leaving. Where is she going? Shoot, we better hide. She's coming this way. As we hid, Scorch flew right past us without noticing. Now's our chance. We snuck in sneakily and took out a few guards so as to not bring attention to ourselves. Nighty night. Soon enough, I was able to locate where the missing piece was. Wow, this room is huge. There's the missing ice core, Trix. I'm on it. As Trix went forward to grab the ice artifact, it melted in an instant. <laughs> You really fell for that one, Ice Spider. Say hi to Mommy. She's going on my honey trap. I can't escape. Help me, son. Mom! Give her back, you foul insect! I thought I had won, but this was just another one of Scorch's traps. On days 85 to 89, I was contemplating what to do. I wanted to save my mother, but I couldn't do that with Scorch here. You look surprised. Well, I have another surprise for you. I finally noticed the real missing ice piece floating beside Scorch. Ta-da! <laughs> hmm? But which is more important? The missing piece or your dear mother? That's enough! I was about to rush in to start fighting her, but she knocked me backwards before placing a lever down nearby. Nah, you aren't very observant, are you? Why not look up before you decide to rush things? I looked cautiously and realized my mother was standing right below a bunch of anvils ready to drop. Please, why are you doing this? Couldn't we work something out for everyone? You don't get it. The only thing I want worked out is for you to die. Suddenly, Trix jumped in from behind her and grabbed the ice piece before darting over to where the snowflake was waiting. Ooh, did you find the icy thing? You're the icy thing. Use it. No, I gotta run in case more guards come so I can stop them. Good luck. With that, he absorbed the piece and transformed. Ah, no, this isn't supposed to happen. Scorch's anger caused her to momentarily forget about my mom, and I was able to break the lever she placed. Run so quick! I need you to absorb my power! What? Why? I can't do that! You have to! This is what I was made for! I know it now! It's the only way to save your mother and defeat Scorch! I... okay. Thank you. Uh... Ben! My real name is Ben! Thank you, Ben. You're a hero. I did as instructed, and I absorbed his power. His sacrifice gave me a new ability. I was now able to shoot ice spikes. I wasted no time and used it against Scorch. <sighs> You'll pay for that. I continued to send ice flying in her direction as she did her best to burn me. Every time she could get closer to the ground, she punched me with flames a few times, but couldn't avoid my new attacks when she did. Enough. She stopped trying to fight and flew higher to dodge me completely. Just to give you another surprise. Beast bug, attack! A big firebug monster stormed into the room and Scorch flew away before I could stop her. No! Ugh. Fine, I'll squish this insect first. I turned back to the monster bug and it immediately attacked. It hit me with more fire and did an area attack. I couldn't dodge it, so I used my new spikes to retaliate. What's the matter? Don't like a little frostbite? With my stronger skills, it had no hope against me. I hit the beast with another wave of spikes and it finally died. 
With a monster defeated, I ran to release my mother from the trap. Thank you, son. I can't believe how strong you've got. No time to talk, Mom. We need to go! We made it back to the Spider Kingdom on days 90 through 94. As we approached, the Goblin King was happy to see us and his bride again. There she is! That's my girl! Thank you again for saving me, son. I think you're ready to equip this Ice Dragon Steel Armor. It's been passed down for generations, and many more generations to come. The Icy Dragon Armor provided immense defense bonuses, and it looked super cool. Thanks, Mom! This is one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. With that settled and Mom back home, it was time for a proper wedding. Everyone was there, and I walked Mom down the aisle. Warriors, goblins, and others, today we see two beautiful creatures come together as one. You and now say your vows. My darling goblin, from the moment our paths crossed, I knew that you were the one. As we begin this journey together, I promise to be your constant companion, your source of strength, and your refuge in times of need. I vow to love you, cherish you, and honor you for all of my eight-legged days. I vow to be your partner in all things, to support you, encourage you, and love you with all of my being for as long as I live. You may now kiss your bride. Just like that, Mom and the Goblin King were married. Now it was time for some celebration. This after party is going so well. Boy, is it. I've been pardoned for all my crimes. So, uh, what were those crimes exactly? Exactly. Oh, would you look at that? Fruit punch bowl! What a silly little fox. With everyone having a blast, there was still one more thing to do. A toast! Ahem. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. I would like to make a toast to my mother and the Goblin King. To many more years and a great life together. And also, I just want to tell everyone to like the video if you enjoyed it so far. Comment who your favorite character is and subscribe so you never miss another video. I don't know what he's talking about, but I love it. And let us not forget, we must stop Scorch and her army. We brought the battle of a lifetime to Scorch's kingdom on days 95 through 97. There were polar bears, spiders, and goblins all fighting and holding their own against the massive firebug army. Keep fighting, hold them back. I was helping fight with my ice powers, silently hoping Trix was keeping Max away. The battle was long and intense. While there were three armies on our side, Scorch still had a multitude of bugs fighting for her. Her. Ugh, where is Scorch? The Hornet was nowhere to be found as her minions battled. I was busy fighting and desperately watching out for their leader. Trix was having a different issue in the distance. No, Maxie, you can't join the fight. You have to stay away for your own safety. I'm joining. My brother's risking his life and I'm just supposed to hide. Yes, your brother is strong enough to be safe. So am I. Maxie, no. Trix tried to stop him, but Maxie had already shoved past her and darted towards me on the field. I didn't notice him until it was too late. He had already seen me using my ice powers. Maxie! Oh no! You weren't supposed to see that! He stood there stunned. Maxie, are you okay? I what? You had... When? Brother, snap out of it! I don't feel so good. Maxie passed out, and I hurried to get him to safety. On days 98 and 99, we were in a hospital room, surrounding Maxie. Come on, Maxie, you gotta get through this. I can't lose you again. There really is nothing we can do. My magic is not powerful enough to reanimate a soul twice. Please, we have to do something. Maybe there's another ice core. Or the polar bears have some magic we don't know about. The goblin magic is the most powerful magic around. If they can't save Maxie, no one can. There's always a way. Not this time. I'm sorry, young prince. There is no known magic that can do what you ask. What about a non-known power? We wouldn't have time to discover it. I felt so hopeless. All I could do was cry. I'm gonna miss you, Maxie. A single tear rolled down my face and onto Maxie, and the unthinkable happened. He started to wake up. Maxie, you're alive! It's a miracle! It seems that your love for your brother has brought him back to life! My boy is back. I'm so happy. He's okay. Wow! Saved by love. This is just like that one movie. The one about Rapunzel? No, I can't remember the name. Never mind. I'm just happy you're alive! Me too! Me three! 
You mean the movie about a girl with white hair? It doesn't matter. Just let it go. You're right. I'm just glad to be alive. Now that Maxie was better, it was time to get back to business. We still have to defeat Scorch, and I know just where she is. It was day 100, and it was finally time to end Scorch once and for all. I arrived back at the battlefield and entered her base. There she was, waiting for me. That time you arrived, I thought you were a scary spider for a second. You're a fool if you think I wouldn't show up. I swore that by the end of 100 days, you would fall to the ground and be defeated. Guess what day it is? Uh, let's see. Is it day 99? No, it's day 100, and it's your day to die. Scorch and I tumbled and rumbled. It was back and forth with powerful blows of fire and ice, like two enemies dancing. But Scorch had the upper hand, and I seemed to be losing. I don't think I'm gonna make it. This is the end. <laughs> Just as I predicted, you would die and I would live. Not so fast, ugly flying ants. Check out my new ice ability. Maxie, out of nowhere, began freezing Scorch. Together, we combined our ice powers to freeze Scorch into a permafrost state and then chipped away at her until she cracked into a million pieces. I guess the prophecy was correct. With you gaining some of my powers, she was defeated with ice. Victory Screech time! Bronzo! Download Honkai Star Rail using the link in the description to help support the channel. And don't forget to use the code on screen to get 50 Stellar Jades. Thanks Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video.